As the committee knows, on May 13th, 2019, Attorney General Barr directed me to conduct a preliminary review into certain matters related to federal investigations concerning the 2016 presidential election campaigns. That review subsequently um, developed into several criminal investigations and gave rise to my subsequent appointment as special counsel in these matters. Many of the most significant issues documented in the report that we have written, including those relating to lack of investigative uh, discipline, failure to take logistical, logical investigative steps, and bias are re uh, relevant to important national security interests that this committee and the American people are concerned about. If repeated and left unaddressed, these issues could result in significant national security risks and further erode the public's faith and confidence in our justice system. As we said in the report, um, our findings were sobering. I can tell you, having spent 40 years plus as a federal prosecutor, they were particularly sobering to me. A number of my colleagues who uh, spent decades in the FBI themselves they were sobering. While I'm encouraged by some of the reforms that have been implemented by the FBI, the problems identified in this report, anybody who actually reads the report and the details of the report, the documented portions of the report, I think would uh, find that um, the problems identified in the report are not susceptible to overnight fixes. As we said in the report, they cannot be addressed solely by enhancing training or additional policy requirements. Rather, what is required is accountability, both in terms of the standards to which our law enforcement personnel uh, hold themselves and in the consequences they face for violation of laws and policies of relevance. I'm here to answer your questions. I appreciate the opportunity to. I'll answer them to the best of my ability and I hope to be of service to your oversight function. As I'm sure you know, the Department of Justice um, has issued some guidelines as to what I'm authorized to discuss and those things that I am not authorized to discuss. In this regard, uh, accordingly, I'll refer principally to the report. I do want to emphasize a few points at the outset, however. First, I want to emphasize in the strongest terms possible that my colleagues and I carried out our work in good faith with integrity and in the spirit of following the facts wherever they lead without fear uh, or favor. At no time and in no sense did we act with a purpose to further partisan or political ends to the extent that somebody suggests otherwise that's simply untrue and offensive. Second, the findings set forth in this report are serious and deserve attention from the American public and its representatives. Let me just briefly highlight a few of those. For one, we found troubling violations of law and policy in the conduct of highly consequential investigations directed at members of a presidential campaign and ultimately a presidential administration. To me, it matters not whether it was a Republican campaign or a Democrat campaign. It was a presidential campaign. Our team comprised dedicated and experienced prosecutors and law enforcement agents who worked day in and day out through the entire um, COVID epidemic in the office trying to interview people, all in an effort to try to get to those facts and the ground truth. Uh, that such a group of people made these findings, experienced FBI agents, experienced prosecutors, not people by and large from Washington, but from other parts of the country. The fact that these people made these findings, as reflected in the report, um, is of concern. Um, and should be of concern to any American who cares about our civil liberties, the rule of law, and the just and proportionate application of the law to all of us. Whether we're friends or we're foes, the law ought to apply to everybody in the same way. During our investigation, we charged a former FBI agent who pleaded guilty to the felony offense of altering and fabricating a portion of a document used to obtain a court order, a FISA order, of a surveillance of a United States citizen which in our view is a significant problem. Several of the relevant FISA applications at issue um, in the Crossfire investigation omitted references to what was clearly relevant and highly exculpatory information that should have been disclosed to the FISA court. Multiple FBI personnel who signed or assisted in preparing renewal applications for that same FISA 
Warren acknowledged that they did not believe that the target, Mr. Page, was a threat to national security, much less a knowing agent of a foreign power, which is what the law requires. It appears from our investigation that the FBI leadership dismissed those concerns. Another aspect of our findings concerned the FBI's failure to sufficiently scrutinize information it received or to apply the same standards to allegations it received about the Clinton and Trump campaigns. As our report details, the FBI was uh, too willing to accept and use politically funded and uncorroborated uh, opposition research, such as the Steele dossier. The FBI relied on the dossier and FISA applications, knowing that it was uh, likely um, material originating from a political campaign, a political opponent. It did so even after the President of the United States, the FBI and CIA directors and others received briefings about intelligence suggesting that there was a Clinton campaign plan underway to stir up a scandal tying Trump to Russia. The accuracy of the intelligence was uncertain at the time, but the FBI failed to analyze or even assess the implications of the intelligence in any meaningful way. When the FBI learned that the primary source of information for the Steele dossier, which was basically the guts of the narrative about there being a well um, uh, coordinate conspiracy involving Trump and the Russians. When they learned that uh, Danchenko was the um, uh, primary subsource uh, for those reports, it was at the time when the FBI already knew that Danchenko himself had previously been the suspect of an FBI espionage investigation. He was suspected of being a Russian asset. Um, and nonetheless, they signed him up as a paid informant without further investigation of that espionage concern to say nothing of resolving that espionage matter before using Denchenko and Denchenko's information. And when the FBI and Special Agent Mueller's office learned that Steele's primary subsource likely had gathered important portions of the dossier information uh, during travels to Russia with uh, one Charles Dolan, it inexplicably decided not to interview Dolan uh, or investigate his activities. Finally, I would like to add that although our work exposed uh, deep concerns um, concerning facts about the conduct of these investigations, our report should not be read to suggest in any way that Russian election interference was not a significant threat. It was. <clears throat> Nor should it be read to suggest that the investigation, um, the investigative authorities at issue uh, no longer serve important law enforcement and national security interests. They do. Rather, responsibility for the failures and transgressions that occurred here rests with the people who committed them or allowed them to occur. Again, to my mind, the issues raised in the report deserve close attention from the American people and their elected representatives here in Washington. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.